as I was thinking of the enormity of this event in my life and the inadequacy of any words to capture it, a phrase I recently heard kept ringing in my mind. Life is not measured by the number of breaths we take, but by the moments that take our breath away. This is a moment that takes my breath away. It takes my breath away to stand in the shadow of Margaret Brent, the mother of all women lawyers. She who 400 years ago stepped alone when there were none. It takes my breath away that my friends nominated me and so many supported me to receive this prestigious award. This little black girl from Detroit who never thought she'd be a lawyer, who knew no lawyers except Perry Mason. <laughs> I am humbled, I'm grateful, and I'm honored to accept this award. It takes my breath away to be honored with these extraordinary women, my sisters who have devoted a lifetime of service to the profession and the cause of justice. And I stand on the shoulders of previous nominees who have mentored and taught and believed in me, Betty Fletcher, Elaine Jones, Pat Wall, Sandra Day O'Connor, Esther Rothstein, and Laurel Bellows. And all the other women who stand with me today my angels on my shoulder, like my beloved Judge Constance Baker Motley, who was the first African-American woman to ever serve on a United States District Court right here in the Southern District of New York, and the fourth woman ever in history to hold that seat. She took me under her wings and taught me so much about judging and family and life and Diana Murphy and Anna Diggs Taylor and Ann Thompson and my dear Consuela Marshall who's here all the way from California. All those men and women who nurtured and supported me have contributed to this moment for I stand not here alone. From the National Institute of Trial Advocacy and the Black Women Lawyers Association and I saw Eileen Letts here and the National Bar Association with Benita Banks, immediate past president and Dean Joanne Epps from NIDA and Sue Bogart from one of my first uh, young lawyers who worked with me in the U.S. Attorney's Office and MLER and Lawyers Without Borders and the Federal Judges Association. It takes my breath away to know that all of you have supported me all my life and that so many of my dear friends of the bench and bar have traveled so far to be with me in this moment. They should really be up here with me because they have mightily contributed to my career and to me living out my dreams like my favorite law professor who's here, Professor Howard Glickstein and the dean of my law school, Patty O'Hare, Notre Dame, the anchor of my career and June Baldwin, who I met my first day clerking for Judge Robert Sprecher. We were the first two African-American women to ever serve as law clerks on the circuit, and she had short hair, and so did I, and the moment we saw each other, we were best friends. <laughs> and my career in that federal building as a law clerk, starting on the 26th floor, then going to the U.S. Attorney's Office, becoming chief of a division, on 15 and then going back to the 19th floor for the U.S. District Court for almost 15 years and now back on 26. <laughs> My career is like an elevator ride in the federal building. <laughs> it takes my breath away to see all my beloved law clerks now totaling 45. They are my family too, and their families are my family. From my first, who was in the room, Barbara Holden Smith, just recently appointed Associate Dean at Cornell Law School. Stand, Barbara. And to my uh, permanent clerk, Erin McGinley, who has worked so hard for me in my judicial role, and all my clerks who have joined and supported me not only as a judge but in all my endeavors, I would ask my clerks, there have been so many to please stand. They're here today.
I could not be here, I would not be here without them. Their level of commitment and devotion has been extraordinary. Finally, it takes my breath away to have my whole family here with me. My God family, the Logan, Richies, Lee, Lyle, and Lynn, and please stand, and my wonderful children, Jonathan and Claire, who have stood by me, who have supported me all my life, as well as my loving husband, David Stewart, who has been so devoted to the family, being chef, uh, bottle washer, uh, a supplier of materials and chambers, supporter of everything for more than almost 30 years. I thank you, David. You have your love and devotion. I am so grateful. To my sisters, Drew and Marcia, who are always there for me, particularly this weekend, particularly my sister, Marcia, who's a nurse, who traveled with my father, Joshua Marcus Williams, who's 91 seated in that wheelchair over there. <laughs> raising his hand. I am so grateful to my sisters and their support. And to my mother, 84, through all her aches and pains, said she wouldn't have missed this moment if she had to crawl to New York. <laughs> So I thank you, Mom. I dedicate this award to both you and Dad and all the courage and inspiration you gave me, teaching me to always reach for the stars, to never give up, to know that I could achieve whatever I wanted, that taught me about justice and fairness and sacrifice, and that with every success and blessing comes the obligation to reach out and to make a path to make a path a little easier, a little clearer, life a little better for all those who follow. And I think that is the hallmark of all these women that we are honoring here today to make a difference in the world. And so as I board my plane tonight at JFK, heading to Kenya to lead our second Lawyers Without Borders team to conduct our second trial advocacy program with Erin McGinley, Returning this year to, re to train 50 lawyers and prosecutors who focus on gender violence and issues that affect women, I will savor this moment that takes my breath away. It will stay locked in my heart and my mind forever and serve as a constant reminder of the glass ceilings that have been shattered and those that need to be shattered, of the glass ceilings that still exist and the ones we must tear down. I will think of these barriers we face, but face them with courage because I know all of you join me and all of us here knowing that we must stand in the name of Margaret Brent. We must make this more than a moment to remember. We must dedicate our lives to breaking the glass ceiling and continuing the cause of justice, equal justice for all. Thank you.